second. All right. So, yeah. So today we're going to discuss about section C. This is for MF paper two, and yes. So. Yes. Yeah, so over here we will start from the. This is SBP, two thousand fourteen paper, two section C. Okay. So we will start from the motion along the straight line. All right. For this question, it's quite easy, but you will need to understand some information. Uh, yeah. By the way, section C, there's a four question. You you only need to choose two. So yes. So let's begin with the information we have. Right, so okay, so a particle will move along the straight line. Okay, so let me move along the straight line, and then you're passing through the fixed point O, which the velocity is fourteen. Okay, the first sentence here have some very important information, because when he passing through the fixed point O, you have some information because motion along the straight line, at O itself, the displacement will equal to zero. Okay. However, when you see the center like this, where the t in the second, okay. So this one that's mean at o itself, time actually will equal to zero also. So that's that's mean a particle move along the straight line and passing through the fixed point o, which the velocity of fourteen is acceleration by a equals to five. Five minus two t, where t is the time in a second. Actually, here they got so many comma. I think what they're trying to say is the particle will passing through the fixed point O, where the t is in second. That's mean. That's mean the particle after he pass through the O, then only they start to calculate the time. So over here, what I understand is velocity at O itself is fourteen. Okay, this information is very important to help you to find C. Right, but why you have C? Because you learn about integration, right? When you do the integration, you will always need to plus C. So this information, this information over here is to help you to find C. By the way, for some students who do not learn about this chapter, maybe I just briefly go through. So this is how you will, okay. S is stand for displacement, V stand for velocity, and A stand for acceler acceleration. So in order to go from, to change from. Displacement to velocity. What you need to do is you have to differentiate s. So I will say ds dt will equals to v. So in order to get a from v, you will need to differentiate v. So a will equals to dv dt. Because in this topic they always relate related to time. So dt is always at the bottom. Something like rate of change. Alright. Then if the other way around. If I have a, I want to get v. So what I will do is, in order to get a, I will need to integrate v. So when I integrate v over here later at the bottom, I will have something like plus c because integration always you will have plus c. So if I have v, I want to get s, I will need to integrate v. Right. This is something very important about this chapter. If you understand the whole chapter, will become so easy. Right, so yeah, we have this information, and then we have an equation, a equals to five minus two t. So I write down the equation, a equals to five minus two t. Okay, the first one he asks you to find the maximum velocity. So for maximum velocity, whenever we see maximum or minimum, means what? Velocity right means dv dt will equals to zero. Okay, this is what happened to ma maximum velocity. If the question says maximum displacement, that means ds dt equals zero. If the question says minimum acceleration, that means da dt equals zero. Mean you just differentiate the opponent, the component, and then you, you you make it become zero, right? So in this case, maximum velocity means differentiate v, you will get zero, and okay, and yeah, you have to find the uh, maximum velocity of the particle. However, from the information on the top here, I know dvdt basically equals to a. Correct or not? Dvdt actually is a in this case, so that means a equals zero, equals to five minus two t. So I know my two t will equals to five, my t will equals to five over two, or you can call it two point five. Okay, this is the value of t. But then the question one to five velocity, you cannot stop here. 
So I will need to have velocity and then I substitute my t equals to 5 over 2 into it. Then I can get my maximum velocity. That's all you can get three mark. However, how do I get v? This is the problem. So in order to get v, I understand v basically is equals to integrate a because it's over here. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> v actually is equals to Ah, uh, what am I right here? <laughs> v equals to integrate a, oh, integrate a. <laughs> no wonder I have two integrate v here. V, yeah, you know from a change to v, you have to integrate a. All right, so I will integrate a. I will get five t minus two t square over two plus c. All right, this is v. Then I'm going to simplify this one. The, the v actually equals to five t minus t square plus c. Alright, after you have this equation, you will need to find c. So what I will do over here is I understand when my t equals to 0, my v actually will equal to 14. Based on, okay, that means when t equals to 0, my v actually equals to 14. I will substitute into here to find my v equation. So when my t equals to 0, t, okay, v will equal to 14 when t equals to 0. So I get 0 minus 0 plus c. So therefore, c equals to 14. Therefore, I have the equation which is v equals to 5t minus t squared plus 14. Okay, then what, what I will do next is in order to find my maximum velocity, I know my maximum velocity, my time equals to 5 over 2. So I will substitute 5 over 2 into a t here. So 5 multiple 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2 square plus 14. Then I can easily get my answer. So which is 25 over 2 minus 25 over 5, uh, 25 over 4 plus 14. So which is 20.25. So this is my maximum velocity. Right, so yeah, in order to solve A, you will need to understand a few things. The first is, you have to understand this one. The question gives you, at the fixed point O, the velocity is 14. That means, when T equals to 0, V will equal to 14. First information you need to understand. Second information you will need to understand is, how to change A to V. In order, in order to change A to V, you, you will need to understand about this diagram. So because this diagram tell you, in order to change A to V, you, you will need to integrate A, then you can get V. So you will need to have some simple integration. You need to understand about simple integration law. Then you will know you have plus C, then you use this information to find C, then you just substitute your time into here. Of course, over here, you also need to understand what is the meaning for maximum velocity. Maximum velocity just means differentiate V, you will get zero. Okay, I will move on to the next part. Okay, B asks you to find the time in the second when the particle will stop. Particle will stop means what? When V equals to zero. So simple. Okay, so that means V equals to zero. Then zero will equals to 5T minus T square plus 14. Then I will make T square become positive. So it will be T square minus 5T. 5T, why write 15T? I mean 5T. Yeah, 5t minus 14. I mean I multiple negative into every single thing here. Then I factorize it. Equals to 0. So t squared is just t and t. 14 just 7 and 2. Because I want to get 5. This is negative, this is positive. So t will equal to 7. Or t will equal to negative 2. However, time it cannot be negative. So I'm going to reject the negative 2. So I only have one answer. So he asks you find the time in second when the particle will stop. So what the particle will stop at 7. So this 3 mark is kind of bonus mark because it's just a simple factorization and you can easily get 3 mark. I have no idea why it's so easy. And, but I think it's definitely correct. But then normally this one is just 1 mark. Find the time in a second when the particle stop. Alright, just like this. Easy. Okay, then the next part. He asks you to find the total distance travel by the particle in the first 9 seconds. Okay, this is the most difficult part about the 
the whole whole topics. So, because this is motion along the straight line, that's mean in the straight line, if this is particle, if this is particle, the particle might move to the right first and then it make U turn to the left and then it make U turn again to the right. So total distance that means you have to find all the distance over here. Yes. So in order to get the total distance, you will need to understand something here. Whenever the particle want to make U turn, so the velocity will, will be equal to zero. Whenever particle make U turn over here, velocity will equal to zero. Mean the particle will need to stop for a while before he make U turn. So that's mean over here, the particle will need to if if the particle want to make another U turn to the left side or left side or or they call it make a loop. Uh, loop. Okay, so yeah, velocity will equal to zero. Okay, this is something you will need to understand. So in this case, we already solve when v equals zero. Our time equals to 7. That means I know the particle only make U turn one time, which is in the 7 second. So that means from 0 to 9 seconds over here, the particle only make U turn one time, which is 7. So over here, at least I understand something. If the particle will start from origin, the time will equal to 0. Then the particle will move until V equals 0, time will equal to 7. Then the particle will make U-turn and somewhere stop here, maybe, I don't know, the time equals to 9. Then I need to find the total distance, that's mean from 0 to 7, and then from 7 to 9. So this is the total distance I will need to find. But, of course, the particle not necessarily have to move right, right, uh, right hand side first. The particle can move left hand side also. But it doesn't matter. What matters here is, you need to find the distance. So I will teach you some easiest way to actually solve here. Because I understand this, so what I will do over here is, since I know 0 to 7, so I will do something is something like, I will integrate, in order to get displacement, I will integrate V from 0 to 7. Then plus, I will integrate V again from 7 to 9. Do you see this is total in the first 9 seconds? And then I will separate the 7 here because the particle make U turn at 7. Alright. How to know how to know t equals to 7? Because we already find in the part B. Part D part B actually says when particles stop, right? When particles stop, you will get the time is 7. So this is the reason why I know why I know it's a 7. Alright. So I will just need to find over here, then I can easily know the total distance. Okay, distance is highly related to displacement, which is we call it S in this case. But displacement is not the distance, they are related. Right? So if you have no idea about uh, motion along a straight line, you can go to have a look at my video. And actually last year, I do have a two hour virtual class about uh, display, uh, this chapter. So you can check it out. Okay, so yeah, this is simple. I have the equation V on the top there. Uh, what is my equation V? 5T minus T squared plus 14. So I will need to integrate 5t, 5t minus t squared plus 14. And then from 0 to 7. Okay, then I will plus this one also. Do the same thing. This one is from 7 to 9. And then 5t minus t squared plus 14. Yeah. After that, maybe I can teach you another method. But I, I think this method is quite easy because you do not need to know whether the particle moves left, left hand side or right hand side. But... Yeah, some teacher actually will teach another method. A anyways, yeah, I just solve this one fast, uh, very fast. So yeah, let's continue here. So I will integrate 5t, I will get 5t squared over 2 minus t cubed over 3 plus 14t. And then I will substitute 0, 7 later. And then I will plus the same thing. 5t squared over 2 minus t cubed over 3 plus 14t shit cannot write here plus 14t and then this one will be 9 7 all right then you just substitute 7 into all the t minus substitute 0 into all the t of course substitute 0 you can get 0 so i can i will do it quickly so 5 multiple 49 over 
2 minus 7 power of 3 over 3 plus 14 multiple 3 and multiple 7 so yeah we'll get 1 we'll get 106.17 okay this value is very the big <laughs> let me just double check plus 14 times 7 yep it's correct then I will plus I substitute 9 into here and then I minus substitute 7 7 I already have is 106.17 then we need to substitute 9 into here again so we 5 multiple 81 over 2 minus 9 power of 3 over 3 plus 14 multiple 9 Yeah, this is 85.5. Right, so from here, you have to understand this one is cannot be negative. Negative means what? You have to add the modulus by yourself because this term must always equal to positive. So this is 106.17. So this 85.5 minus 106.17, you should get positive 20.67. Then you just plus both of them, you can get the final answer. So 20.67 plus 106.17. So yeah, you'll get 126.84. Right. So this is how we find the total distance. Right. So if you want to learn about the second method, yes, it's actually the same idea. But okay, we just write down the answer. See the second method, we can get the same answer or not. 126.84. Eight four. So yeah, I'm going to erase here. Erase all this. Oops, I do not want to erase that line. Wait. Okay. In the second method, I I will do it separately. So what I will do is I will try to find what is. Uh, what's, where is the displacement when t equals to 7? So what I will do is, of course I will same thing, I will need to find s first. So s will equal to integrate v, just now we already do, which is 5t squared over 2 minus t cubed over 3 plus, uh, plus 14t plus c. But because we know when s equals to 0, t will equal to 0, so c will equal to 0. Okay, so uh, this is C, Y over plus 3. That's mean plus C. So C in this case, 0. So S basically will equals to 5T squared over 2 minus T cubed over 3 plus 14T. So in this case, I will need to find a displacement as 7 here. Because I know when time equals 0, displacement is 0. So if I can get the displacement here, I can know the distance from 0 to 7. So then we substitute the 7 into here. So I will call it S7, which we already did just now. S7 basically will equal to 106.17. Yeah. So that means at t equals to 7, the displacement is 106.17. Then of course we will need to find the S9. Okay. That means we have to substitute a 9 into it. So we substitute a 9 into it. I believe we did just now. So we will get some value here. Uh, 85.5. It's not mistaken. Okay. That means when t equals to 9 here, my s actually will equal to 85.5. Then this method, you basically, you will need to understand the way you get the distance. Now, from 0 to 7, the distance is 106.17. It's easy. It's obvious. But from t equals 7 to t equals to 9, you need to find this distance. So this distance basically is 106.17 minus 65.15. 
So I will do 106.17 minus 85.5. Then I can get the distance, which is minus 85.5. I guess the distance is 20.27, uh, 20.67. That's mean the total distance will be 20.67 plus 106.17. So I will say 106.17 plus 20.67. Then I can get my total distance. It will be 126.84. Right. Both ideas should get the same. Uh, both methods should get the same answer. Just a different way. Does this method work for any question? Like if the specific says the six second, the, yes, this method actually work in all kind of question. Right, yeah. So I would prefer the first method because the first method you don't need to think so much. You just need to know at which second the particle make U turn. Then you separate your integration. Yeah, you just separate. If U turn two time, then you will separate. You will have three integration. Mean from let's say he make U turn at two and five, for example, you want to find first nine, right? So so if you want to find first nine, so let's say lah, when t equals to zero, you will get sorry when v equals to zero, you will get t equals to two and t equals to five. Now I want to find first nine second, right? So I just do the integration symbol from zero to two, uh, plus my integrate from two to five, uh, plus my integration to five to nine. Then I plus all the integration, I can get the first nine second, alright? Because every time the particle make U turn, you just separate it. Yes, it can use in any case, but you must read the question carefully, see what you're trying to find, alright? Yeah, we spent a lot of time for the first question, so yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, so solution of triangle. Okay, this one is quite simple, but just let me drink a water. Okay, first he asks you to find the length of AC, and I just roughly read the question. This is trabezium ABCD, and AB is parallel to CD, and the question is tell you the angle ADC is obtuse. Obtuse is what? Obtuse is the angle between 90 to 180. Okay, so it's, yeah, more than 90, less than 180, we call obtuse, so where is ADC? A, D, C, yeah, this angle will be obtuse, all right. All right, so I, I will need to find the length of AC. So length of AC, you have two side and one angle on between, you know this is cosine rule, okay? When you have two side and one angle on between, this is cosine rule. So I say AC square will equals to 6.5 square plus 3.5 square minus 2 multiple 6.5, multiple 3.5, and then cos 70. Just use this formula, a square, this formula basically is a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a. Alright, this formula is given. You just need to know when actually you need to use this formula. So let's do 6.5 square plus 3.5 square minus 2 times 6.5 times 3.5 multiple cos 70. Alright, then I will get AC square is basically equal to 38.94. Then therefore AC will equal to square root the answer, right? So I square root my answer. I will get 6.24. So that's mean my AC here is 6.24. It delay get two mark. Alright, then I will need to find the angle ADC. Since I know ADC is obtuse angle, then yeah, I will need to do something. Yeah, def uh, it's definitely have some reason why he give you the angle here. Because if, I, I mean, there's a reason why they give, tell you this is parallel. Because parallel, they will have same angle. That means I will know this angle will same with this angle. So I will, I will find alpha first because I can use sine root easily. So I say sine alpha over 3.5 will equals to uh, sine 70 over 6.24. Alright, so then I find what is my alpha. So sine 70 over 6.24 multiple 
Okay, then shift sign answer. Yeah, it's thirty one point eight one. Am I press calculator wrongly? <laughs> okay, thirty one point eight one. Let me check, double check again. Sine seventy over six point two four multiple three point five. Yeah. And then shift sign answer. Yeah, it's thirty one point eight one. Oh, you mean the final answer? What do you mean by sixty? Oh, you mean sixty two is the final answer for this one? I have no idea what you're saying, but I'm trying to find the A D C now. All right, so yeah, so if I know the alpha is thirty one point eight one, I can use sine rule again to find this obtuse angle. So therefore, I will say, maybe I change blue color. Therefore, I will say is uh, okay. Sine alpha over six point two four. Yeah, actually, if you know that, oh no, you have to do like this. So sine alpha over six point two four equals the sine theta equals six over six point two four equals to sine thirty one point eight one over three point seven. Okay, then you can find the alpha. So sine thirty one point eight one over three point seven, and then multiple six point two four, and then shift sign answer. Okay, I get sixty two point seven four, but you have a problem. This is acute angle. It's not obtuse. So we know in order to get the obtuse, we have to use one hundred eighty minus acute. So one hundred eighty minus sixty two point seven four, then I can easily get the answer, which is uh one seven point two six, one one seven point two six. I mean. <laughs> yep. Okay, this is how we get this format. So basically, I think you, in order you you will use this formula, you get one mark here, one mark here, one mark here, and one mark here. So it's format. Alright, so make sure you understand this. It's quite easy, but I write it down first because I know I will need to use it later. One one seven point two six. All right, so let's move on. Okay, C is the ambitious case. That means you will need to draw your new triangle. All right, so in this one, they say the straight line CD is extend to D such that AD will same with the AD. So CD, where's the CD? Okay, CD will extend to D such that AD was okay. So this is the most important information, and I since ambitious case, you always you can use the isosceles triangle methods. So I'm going to show you how actually this one form. Okay, then then he asks you to sketch the new triangle for ACD. The D will be new D. So yeah, so I'm going to erase some information here because I want here to look more clean. Okay, this one once. Okay, you just remember this angle lah. Before I going to erase it. Okay, that's mean. Over here, it will extend. The CD, actually, it will extend to new D. I do not know where is the new D, but I just extend it first. So after it extend it, he have one condition. This says, the AD, must same with the new AD. So I'm going to make a new AD here. I want to make sure this one is three point seven centimeter. So this is what I will do. So first thing I will have to make sure they are same distance. And CD, do you see he extend to the D? Yes, this is my new coordinate D. Okay, always remember about isosceles triangle, which is Sergi Tiger Summer Kaki, or the Tanya San Jia Sing in Mandarin. All right, so. Yes, this is what the question try to say, and you must understand, and you must be able to get the new coordinate of D. Alright, so summer CC, not summer kaki. Ah, uh, it's it's fine. Okay, let's continue. So I will need to sketch the new triangle for ACD. So this is my ACD. So this triangle must be totally different shape. Ah, uh. whenever for this chapter, the question asks you to sketch the new triangle, it must be different shape. Alright, okay, okay. So now, I will randomly sketch out this triangle. 
something look like this lah. Okay, this this one might be my new triangle. So for my new triangle here, this is D prime, this is C, this is A. You need to have some information. This is six point two four. This is three point seven. And then this angle is still remain the same, right? Alpha is thirty one point eight one. What else information do we have? Yes, we can get this angle. Because if we have this one, this one is 117.24, uh, 0.26, and this one will be 180 minus this one, which is 62.74. Because this is uh, isosceles triangle, so this one will be same also, 62.74. So therefore, I have this angle, which is 62.74. Okay, you must get the idea how to find all this angle because you will need to use it later, I think. Okay, then he asks you to find the air area for ADD. What? <laughs> okay, ADD, that's mean we need to find a... Yeah, they want to ask you to find this triangle. Then it will be very easy because I know this is this two is the same angle, right? 62.74. Then I can know this angle easily. I just use 180 minus these two, then I can get this angle. So yeah, 180 minus 2, 62.74. Yeah, it will be 54.52. Then I just use the triangle formula. Triangle formula tell me is two side and one angle on between, right? This is 3.7, this is 3.7. And the angle on between will be 54.52. Use the sine rule, okay? So triangle is half A, B, sine C. 54.52. Alright, then you can easily get the final answer. 3.7 square divided by 2. Multiple sine 54.52. Yeah, the area will be 5.57 centimeter square. Okay, because this one is a bit weird. The question actually, because no, normally the question, they will ask you to find the area of new triangle. Four significant figures, then you add one more, seven, four. Okay. Alright, so this is very easy. Let me move on. If you have any problem, you can stop me. Alright. Okay. For this question, they say Nosia will run an online business. So she sells show and scarf. Okay. Show. She, she sells show and scarf. Okay. So in a week, she sells X piece of show and Y piece of scarf. So X is the volume of, of the show. Show and the Y is the volume of the scarf. Alright, so the selling price for the show is 12 ringgit each and the scarf will be 5 ringgit each. Okay, so the selling the selling based on the following constant. So yeah, let me just say X basically represents the number for shell show. This is W. And Y basically represents the number of scarf. Alright, and then their price, you have their price here. X the price is selling 12. Y the price is selling 5. Alright, I have everything. So the first uh, first condition is this, the maximum total number for show, for show and scarf will, must be 90. Maximum means, maximum is 90, that means I cannot more than 90, correct or not? If I maximum give you 5 ringgit, I cannot give you 6 ringgit, right? Mean I maximum give you 5 ringgit, I can give the value less or equals to 5 ringgit. This is the idea. So that means x plus y must less or equals to 90. So you have to understand what is the meaning for maximum. I always use money because it's very easy to understand. You just imagine if your friend maximum will give you 5 ringgit, Means your friend can give you four, can give you three, but it cannot give you six ringgit, correct or not? Yeah, then you know it's less or equal. Okay? Then the second condition, 
the number of the show must not exceed two times of the number of scarf. This is easy. So that means x cannot exist less or equal. Two times of scarf. Y. Alright. The third one. The minimum total sales for both sh for sh for show and scarf is 600. Minimum means I minimum need to give you 5 ringgit. That means I will give you more than 5 ringgit, correct or not? But I can still give you 5 ringgit, huh? so you have to equal there. That means if x actually sell 12 ringgit, right? That means 12x, each y sell 5 ringgit, right? Plus 5y must bigger or equal to 600. Alright, this is something very important. Then, of course, I will need to draw it out, but then 600 is a very big number. Oh, but, but then I still, still fine. Lah. Okay, so. After you have this three in equality, you can easily get the three mark. For the part A, he asks you to write the three in, in, in equality. Then what we do next is we have to draw the graph. Two centimeter for 10, two centimeter for 10. Right, I do not have graph paper here, but can I use this graph paper? I hope I can. Okay, so I will use the new whiteboard to actually use it. I hope it's enough for me to explain. Okay, just assume this is your graph paper because just assume the one square box here actually is two centimeter, right? Because that's quite hard for me to get a graph paper here. So I will try to do something like this. Okay, it's not perfect, but then yeah, you just, you just need, to, okay, need to understand how to draw the graph. So see the question say 2 set, uh, two, this is y and this is x. The question say 2cm equals to, 2cm equals to 10. So I write my unit here. This is 10, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I think maximum is 90. La. I, I don't know. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Because I remember SBN graph is not so long one. So maybe here I go until 100. La. 100 is zero. And then I will need to have all my equation. I'm going to write here also. Yeah. So yeah, where is my equation just now? x plus y, yeah, x plus y equals to 90. And then second one, x less or equals to 2y. x will less or equals to 2y. The third one, 15x plus 5y. 15x, 12x, not 15x, but 12x plus 5y will be equal to 600. All right. So you need to draw three of these equations into the graph. However, something is very important to understand here is when you draw the graph, I mean when you draw the straight line, you shouldn't have the inequality symbol into it. Inequality symbol over here is just tell you where to shade it. I mean just help you to find the shaded region. It will not tell you the, the straight line. Alright, so in order to get the straight line, you have to understand this one actually means x plus y equals to 90. Alright, this is equation of straight line. Inequality is not the straight line. Inequality is the straight line with the shaded region. Okay, you can understand like this. Alright, so I will need to draw the first line first. So I will need to get my coordinate. So I will form uh, a simple table, x and y. So I assume when x equals 0, my y will 0, my y will be 90. When my y is 0, x is 90. So I got two points here, 90 and 90. I'm going to plot it. 0, 90, and 90, 0. Okay, so this, then I will sketch my first line. is from 90 to 90. Okay, later we need to go to understand the inequality. So if you done this one, I'm going to erase this one. Oh my god. Ah, uh, cannot erase. Shit. Can I use eraser? 
<laughs> okay, interesting. This is the this is what happened when the app is too smart. Alright, so never mind, I will fully utilize to use all the space here. Alright, so I have second thing is x plus y, x plus two y. No, no, x equals to 2y. Second equation, I will need to draw this one, so I randomly give it some value for x, y. x is 0, y is 0. Then 0, 0 is not, is not helpful for me, so maybe I will get uh, when y is 80, yeah, or when y is 100, since I have 100. Uh, never mind, lah. I say when y is 80, Oh, cannot. It's too big. When x is 80, y is 40. Yeah, so I use uh, 80 and 40. So 0, 0 is somewhere here. When x is 80, y will be 40. x is 80, y will be 40. Somewhere here. Alright, then I will sketch it. Is, is it correct? Ah? When x is 80, y is 40. Yeah, correct. Okay, my second line. But if you draw it yourself in the graph paper, just make it just make sure you extend it until the maximum. Lah. Yeah, just maybe draw until 90. Alright. And uh, always label it. Lah. This is x equals to 2y. And then this is x plus y equals to 90. Then I have still have one more, which is this one. So it's 12x plus 5y equals to 600 then yeah then I will do the same thing for 0 0 normally I love 0 0 uh, it's easy x is 0 y will be 120 okay it's very big 120 I do not want 120 then I don't get 0 but maybe you can reach until 120 100 120 it's fine never mind I just write until 120 lah. 110 120 okay then yeah 120 when y is 0 x is 50 okay x is 0 so I have 120 0 when x is 0 when y is 0 x is 50 50 so yeah I have the third line here Okay, and this equation I will write it also if 12x plus 5y equals to 600. Okay, after I got all this, I will need to shade the region. Okay, so you need to understand what the question trying to find. Okay, so he asks you to use a skill on x axis and y axis and shade the regions, shade the region R, which satisfy all the above constraints. Alright. So first thing is, I start from anyone. Okay, x plus y. Okay, when we do the shaded region, we need to pay attention on the y value only. When I say, no matter I say less than or more than, I only care about y. Y value, I do not care about x value. This is something you must pay attention in. So x value is very important. Now. So this one is called y is less than. Okay, so this line, if y is less than, I use green maybe. Okay, less, less, you just imagine, you just imagine, do, I will need to go, if if this line, I move this direction, you just imagine this line, I move this direction, I will get bigger, correct or not? So less than, I will definitely need to move this direction. If this line, if I move this direction, my y value will become less or less or less or less. So less than means this here. So I do some remark first because I will shade the fi final region with R. Ah, oh, shit. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just let me move on. Because I cannot erase the arrow. So this is something. Okay, anyways, the second one. X will less or equals to 2Y. A lot of students, when they shade this one, they will think this is less than. Then you got wrong. Why? 
I say we only pay attention on y value. So this one called y is bigger than x. Okay, y, 2y is bigger than x. Bigger, bigger is over here, right? Bigger, I know is this direction. Because you just imagine, if you move this direction, you have the straight line. I hope I, maybe I can give you the idea of the straight line, then I can demo it. Okay, you have the straight line look like this. Okay. Oh, cannot. Oh my god. Wait. I can't move the line. Interesting. <laughs> Do not let me move the line. Okay, maybe I draw the line longer because I'm trying to show you something. Yeah, now I can move the line. You imagine if this is the if this is y equals to 2x okay when i say we care about the the y value is something like this if i move like this you can check out my y value okay look on the y axis my y value actually will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger bigger right so this one that's why this one we call more than if i move downward you can see my y value is actually you look on the y axis my y value actually become less than, less than, less than. We will go to negative 1, negative 2, negative 10, negative 20, negative 100. So actually this one we call less than. Okay, same idea to all, all the line. You just imagine if the line you can move, look on the y value. Is the y value will become bigger or less than? Alright. I hope you can understand my explanation. Okay, then, therefore, well, I understand less than is on the top here, so I'm going to do some remark here. This is the no, no, they want bigger. So it's that's mean all the direction there. The last one, 2x plus 5y means we pay attention of y. So y is bigger. Bigger it will be this direction. Because on the other side, the y value will become smaller. So over here you will find one area satisfied three of this constraint, which is this area. So I will call the whole area here is R. Okay, this is what the question asks you to do. Then yeah, you you done the part you done the part B. What happened to my paper? Okay, then what we do over here it will be part C. He asks you to find a minimum number of scarf if fifty show. So, so I know this one is basically x. That means when x equals to 50, what is your y value? This is the, what the question one. So I will go into here to find when x equals to 50. Okay, have a look here. When x equals to 50, you basically, you will have two value. When x equals to 50, Okay, you will have two value. When I say two value, that means you will have this one and this one. This is a different. Okay, when x equals to 50, the top one, which is fulfill the condition, this is maximum value. This is the minimum value. Alright, so, but the question asks about minimum, so I only pay attention on the minimum. So my minimum value over here, it will be somewhere here. Maybe I call it 25. I don't know. If you have the graph paper, you can you can see it very nice. So it's 25. Okay, this is the answer for C1. So this one will be 25. So yeah, it's 25, uh, Y value. All right. Teacher can bring the color pencil to shade. No, you only use pencil. <laughs> okay, so don't use color pencil. Only use pencil for the graph. All right, so the maximum sales for both. So in order to find the sales, you have to understand how much they sell for show and they sell for the scarf. So the show is sales is not mistaken as sales 12 ringgit for X. That means this is X, this is Y. And they sell 5 ringgit for Y. So in order to get the maximum sales, I will need to know uh, 12 ringgit have to multiple X and my 5 ringgit have to multiple Y to get certain amount, right? So you have to find a maximum point. So in this case, you have to understand about objective function, which is k equals to a 
AX plus BY. So in this case, we have to find our K, K which is our maximum sales here. So it will be 12X plus 5Y. All right, because your scarf actually sells 5 ringgit corona, so it will be 12X plus 5Y. And you just realize you have 12X plus 5Y equation. You already have it just now, which is this one. Do you see this is 12X plus 5Y? So you can use this equation to find a maximum point. So I will show you how to find a maximum point, definitely. So you draw something which is look parallel. Okay, assume they are parallel. Lah. I hope they are parallel. Okay, almost parallel. Because this one, this one 5x plus 2y, actually they have the same gradient. Okay, so you just imagine this line, they have the same gradient with this line. So I can use this line as, as my objective function to find my maximum. So if you have a ruler, you just adjust your ruler, maximum you adjust go up. When you move up, you find the last coordinate you touch on the shaded area. So the last area you touch on the shaded area will be here. Do you see that? Last point you touch will be here. So what is this coordinate? This coordinate basically it will be 60, 30. Okay, if this one is 60, 30, then you just substitute in, you can get your final answer. So my x is 60. My y is 30. Then I can get my final answer. 12 times 60 plus 5 times 30. 870. This is your maximum sales. Alright. Yeah, the graph, but usually need a lot of time, so I prefer calculation. Yeah, it will need some time for drawing the graph. And for linear programming, the the difficult part is somehow uh, if the equation you got wrong, uh, you will be minus a loss of mark. So a lot of students think this topic is easy. Yeah, as long as you make sure you have all your equation correct, then this one is very easy. If not, this topic will be quite hard also. Because you just imagine two equations you got correct, one equation you got wrong, then the whole thing will be gone. Okay? Okay, so let's move on.